my course, Game Development Basics. This is some extra bonus content to round out week one. As I was wrapping up the content, I realized it was a little light and people might have wanted a little bit more out of the first week. So I decided to record a few more extra things. Now these are all voluntary things, so you don't have to do this content, but they're just a few extras that can help you build out the project that we made in week one. The first thing I wanted to go over is the box brushes in a little bit more detail and show you some of the extra tools that are available to you when you're blocking out your level. This is one of the levels I created and as you can see there's some extra level to it. I made these little thin platforms that you can roll the ball over. But to get an extra dimension you need some type of ramp or something. So I created this and I'll show you how to do this very quickly. Let's create a new box brush. And before I showed you, you could change these dimensions. So let's make this a little bit longer. And if we go over here to where it says select mode, you can go down to brush editing and it gives you all these extra tools to work on your box brushes. So you can grab a face for instance and move the whole face all at once. And on each corner, you'll see these little squares. You can grab those and move those as well. So I'm gonna grab two, so I'm selecting this entire top edge, and then I can move this down and it creates a ramp. Another one that's really neat is the extrude. So if I grab a whole face and I select extrude, then I'm able to pull that face out and make some additional geometry from it. So I could even grab this top one and pull it up and there we have a little ramp that has a block at the top. So I recommend you try these tools out, get an idea of what each of them does and experiment a little around and see if you can make your levels more interesting. The next thing I thought would be interesting to show would be creating a gap in your level. So here's another level I created. And as we can see, we can roll our ball around and there are these gaps in the map. And if I fall into one of them, it'll take me back to the start of the level. So obviously creating the gaps is pretty easy. You just need to create a space between some of the geometry. And as you can see, I got a little creative over here, made some ramps and some various things that the player would have to roll around on. But all throughout the level, there are gaps that the player can fall into. And how did we handle resetting the level when the player falls? So the first thing you're gonna need is a trigger box. And we can see it here, it is a box shaped trigger used to generate overlap events in the level. Let's drag one of these in and let's place it below all of the geometry here. So the player falls a little bit before falling into it. Next, let's just make it the size of the entire level. Let's try 3,000. And then we'll do 3,000 on the Y. And what you don't want is to set yourself up with a situation where the player could miss this by some chance. So I usually just go extra large with it. Now with the trigger box selected, let's go here where it says list of blueprints and say open level blueprint. Now, if you remember, the level blueprint can access any actor in the level. So because we have it selected, if we right click, you'll notice that there already is a reference to the trigger box here. So let's select that. And then we can drag off of this and type overlap. And here we wanna select bind event to on actor begin overlap. Let's connect this to our begin play and if we hover over this, it says that it is a delegate. Now this is part of the event dispatching system. We cover the event dispatcher system in great detail during week four of this course. For now, let's just drag off of this little red square and type custom and create a new custom event. And we'll call this restart. From here, we want to restart the level, which means we want to reload the level that we're currently in. So let's open level by name. And if we wanted to make this work as an actor, 
meaning we wanted to create this as its own class, we could drag off here and there's also a get current level name. And you can connect that directly here. And then wherever this is, it will get the current level name and then open that. So this basically sets up a restart function from your trigger box. Let's compile. And now when we fall off the ledge, it should work just as intended. It resets. We could see this by going further into the level. Regardless of where we fall, it'll always reset us back to the start. The last thing I wanted to set up is some coins. So the player has something to interact with while they're navigating the maze. Here I'm in back in one of my levels and let's create a new class. It's gonna be an actor class and let's call this BP coin. Let's open up BP coin. And the first thing I wanna do is add a visual representation of a coin. So let's add a cylinder. And let's make it a nice thin little disc like a coin. And I wanna rotate it on the Y axis 90 degrees. And then bring it up a little bit so it would be floating off of the ground. And we can find a nice coin material. You can choose the gold one, or there's one for chrome in the starter content. There's also this arrow material one, which tends to stick out a little bit more in the levels. So let's compile and let's drag one into our level. And I think that's good, if not a little bit too big. So let's make it a little bit smaller. We can click this lock and then drag the whole thing and it will scale it all. We'll compile, go back. I think that looks like a good size. And I want it to rotate so it catches the player's eye. And there's already a component built in. If we type rotate, there's this rotating movement component that's pre-built into Unreal Engine. And here you just change the rate. So this one's set to 180 degrees on the Z, which means every second it's going to rotate 180 degrees. I'm gonna slow this down a little bit. And I'm also gonna to go to my cylinder and I'm gonna set the collision to overlap all. So what do we want to happen when we overlap with this collision? We probably wanna keep track of how many coins the player has. For instance, maybe we could set it up that the player can't complete the level until they've collected a certain amount of coins. And the game mode is a great place to keep track of information like this. So let's go to our game mode class. And let's create a new variable called current coins. And this could be an integer. And we want to have it start at zero. Now back in our coin, let's get game mode. And we're going to cast to our BP game mode class. We'll cover casting later on in the course, but for now, you can cast by typing the name of the class, in our case, BP game mode, and you'll get this cast. Casting can be a little bit advanced at this point in the course, so I don't want to get too into it. Let's just connect this for now. Essentially, casting will allow us to gain access to anything that is public within this class. So I can drag off of here and type current coins and we'll get the current coins. We can drag off the current coins and type plus plus, and that's an increment. And now anytime I overlap with one of these coins, I'm going to cast to my game mode so I can get access to the game modes variables. I'm going to get the current coins and I'm going to add a coin to that value. We can also test this by printing the number of coins after we gather one. So let's type here, print. And we can just drag this directly in there. And the last thing we wanna do is we wanna destroy the coin and that way the player can't continually get it. 
So we can drag off of here, type destroy, and now the coin will destroy itself after the player gathers it. So let's test this out. I put a few coins in the level so we could see this. We get one, two, three, and now we have three coins. And here's a little mini challenge for you. Let's see if we can find a way to prevent the player from completing the level until they've gathered a certain number of coins. If you want to try this on your own, pause the video now. Otherwise, I'll show you how to do it. Here I am in my game mode class. I'm going to create another variable. And I'm going to call this required coins. And let's set this to five. We'll compile. Now we want to have a way to check that when we try to finish the level, do we have the current number of coins required? Let's go to our endpoint. And on this event overlap, this is where we want to do that check. So let's make a little bit more space. And from here, let's cast to our game mode again. BP game mode. And off of the object, get game mode. And we need to get both of those variables. So current coins and required coins. And we want to check, are the current coins greater than or equal to the required coins? And this will return a Boolean, so we can create a branch here and drag that in. And now when we overlap with our endpoint, we're going to cast to the game mode. We're going to get the current coins and the required coins and we're gonna check, are the current coins greater than or equal to the required coins? If they are, this will return true, which means we're gonna to go to the next level. And from here, we can drag off this false and just give the player some indication that you do not have enough coins. And just to test this out, I put five coins in my level. So I'm going to grab two of them, one, two, and then I'll try to get out of the level. And I'll see that I says, do you do not have enough coins? If I grab the other three, three, four, five, and now I'll go to the next level. So I hope this bonus content was fun for you. I hope you learned a little bit more. Some of the things we went over we'll cover in future lessons as well but I just thought this would be a fun way to round out the level and give you a few extra challenges. I'll see you next week.